Hey, what's up guys? So we're over on my workbench right now and I'm just gonna sh show you everything that you're gonna pretty much need to do this oil change. Now, I showed you guys a video on the Auto Fanatic channel which was the Alpha Male first oil change when I got the car three years ago. So when I did that three years ago, I actually extracted the oil using the EWK extractor. I will link that video in the description of this video if anybody wants to watch that and have an easier solution to doing this if you're really diligent and you're doing it several times a year regardless of mileage. Now, I do two oil changes a year. It doesn't matter about the mileage, I do it based on time. So now we're going into winter. We're second week of October. I do oil changes on all of my cars this time of year. So all you're pretty much gonna need is an OEM oil filter assembly right here. You could buy this from Mopar online. You could buy this from Centerline Alpha or your local Alfa Romeo dealer. These are about between 80 to 95 bucks. Also, if you're gonna drain the oil from below, you're gonna need a brand new ceiling crush washer right here. These are specific for the Alfa Romeo. You're not gonna be able to find this at a local Napa that I know of. So you're gonna to wanna to get these from the dealer as well because this is a one-time use only. Now you're gonna pretty much just need a 32 millimeter socket. I use it with an extension with a breaker bar. This is pretty much just to do this. Okay, that's how you're gonna get that off. Then for the oil pan, I got the 3.8 socket with a 13 millimeter. I am a Makita 90 degree right angle here with a T30 Torx. This is to get all the hardware on the bottom of the car off the car safely. And then I'm gonna show you another little trick that I do every year. I'm gonna soak the hardware and get all the corrosion off before we reinstall it back on the car. So now a lot of you guys uh, contacted me for a couple of years. You're having issues with uh, cylinder wall scoring and excessive engine oil burning and consumption. Now. The reason why I'm using this Amsoil Signature Synthetic is because it just works. I've been putting this stuff in all my performance cars for over 15 years. I don't have any issues. Being that this is a turbocharged car, high horsepower, there's a lot of wear and tear over there. I wanna have the absolute best oil you could possibly get. This is more money than the Pennzoil you could get, but I just feel that this is a better oil, but you make the choice. It's your car, you do what you want. This is my method of how I'm protecting my investment. So we're gonna get started right now. All right, guys, you can see I got the front of the car lifted up on the custom wood service stands. Now, like I said, you can make these stands depending on the size of your body and what you're exactly working on. But for me, this just works well because I'm thin and I could get under cars relatively easily. So you can see it there, there's plenty of ground clearance. So what I usually do, I leave one jack on the other side, just cranked up a little bit, just to you know put a little bit of uh, relief on the suspension from collapsing. And it just gives me a little bit more clearance when I need it. And uh, that's pretty much, we're gonna go to the bottom of the car in a few moments. But the first step, you're gonna wanna, of course, inspect everything under here. You're gonna actually wanna put work glove because the edges of the engine cover right here are very sharp. And actually the first time I did it, I actually sliced my fingers open. So I'm gonna get some work gloves. We're gonna start pulling this apart. We're gonna drain the oil from the bottom and I'm gonna show you guys start to finish. All right, guys, like I just mentioned, I got my Milwaukee work gloves. You're going to want to lift up here and just pull the engine cover off. You can see that it's captive with these little nipples and these rubber seals. So we're going to just set that to the side on the other side of the garage. Now, this has been a while, so you're going to have to pull this apart too. And you're going to just lift up carefully. You're going to separate this plenum because we have to actually lift this whole mechanism up to get to the oil filter. And what I usually do is I just stuff something under it while I'm working on the car and it'll stop you from going crazy trying to get the oil filter out with this thing constantly collapsing. There's also a line back there that we're gonna have to unclip. We're gonna do that right now. So there's these little clips. I actually gotta take the gloves off because I can't get to them. Right over here for the overflow line. And you're just gonna wanna release that because you don't wanna have this thing get jacked up and you're, you don't want to break that line. Okay, so there's, I released the clip on the passenger side. Let me see what we got here. Okay, so we got that one right there. So you can see here, I can lift this far up and I'm gonna stick a foam yoga block under there and we can get to the oil filter real easily. So before we do that, all right guys, so we're under the car. I'm just gonna show you guys quickly. I'm not gonna show you the whole removal process i'm just using my 90 degree makita right angle and it's a t30 and you're going to just slowly remove all the torx hardware 
And then you're also gonna wanna check to make sure if there's any corrosion or any issues, you're gonna wanna check the threads, fix the threads, or replace new hardware, okay? Or if you want, you could also throw a little dab of copper or silver anti-seize on there just for corrosion resistance because these things do corrode. And you guys could see there, there's another one. You could see all the, the rust on the end. So I actually might soak these in some evapor rust before I put them back on the car. And there's a lot of them. And if I'm not mistaken, these are like six bucks or eight bucks each from the dealer. So you're gonna wanna make sure they're in good shape. So that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna go through, get the rest of them down there, pull the panel off. I'm gonna actually clean the panel and then we're gonna go through the process of the oil change. So all the hardware's out. Bottom tray goes like this. You pull it forward towards you. So it's so like I was telling you guys, you're gonna to wanna to clean all this out and shake out all the gravel that's gonna be caught in the underbelly tray. Now, after we do that, I'm gonna blow out the floor and then I'm gonna soak all the OEM hardware in some evaporust, let that sit for about 20 minutes and then I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on there just to uh, make these things go in a hell of a lot easier. But that's it. This is why I only do this once a year. I don't do this twice a year is because it's an absolute mess. And you can see right here, this is all the construction that goes on in my area. Destroys everything, destroys the car. All right guys, so I got all the hardware in a plastic container. So we're gonna fill this with some evapor rust, and we're gonna let this soak for about 20 minutes or so, just like that. And then I'm gonna drain this out and then I'm gonna spray some penetrating oil or possibly some WD-40 just so when I put the hardware back, any corrosion that was on the threads is gonna be removed and it's gonna go in a hell of a lot easier. So this is, uh, a chelating agent, super safe. You can leave these things in there for a couple of days or a couple of hours, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna harm anything. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you guys all the corrosion that's been removed by the evapor rust. And you can see how murky it got. That's all the corrosion. You can see right there, there's no rust on these hardware pieces at all. Everything has come clean. You can see that there. Remember all the rust that was on there? So this was in there for about 30 minutes. And this is what I highly suggest if you're gonna be working on your cars to get all the corrosion off. So I'm gonna drain this out and then I'm gonna spray this with some penetrating oil just to give it some lubrication and some extra corrosion resistance and ease of application as we go put these things back into the car. All right guys, so we got the under tray removed and you can see this is where the oil is gonna be drained from. You can see there's definitely some residue here, possibly from the last time I drained this out, but we're also gonna be changing the compression sealing washer as well. And you can see there's a paint dab on there, so that'll just let you know if it ever comes loose. You just put a mark there and there, and I'll do that, and I'll show you guys that as well. So before I do this, I'm gonna drain this out, and then I'm gonna clean all of this up with mineral spirits because I want to make sure that it goes back together nice and clean. It's also a good idea to uh, inspect anything for any leaks or anything broken or any kind of debris anywhere throughout the bottom of the car and the chassis, the exhaust or any of that. So now's a good time to do it that you got the under tray fully removed. So we're going to set the camera up. We're going to drain the oil and uh, come back in a few moments. Okay, that was on there. All right, so I just went up to the oil fill and I removed the cap just because it'll let air get into the system and drain out a lot better and faster. So what I like to do, I like to just leave the screw in there, the drain bolt in there and slowly drain it out before I remove it fully. It's just my little tip and trick on how to do it without making a mess go all over your floor or driveway. So we're gonna let that drain out for a little while. Then we're gonna button this back up and then we're gonna go to the engine compartment and finish this up. All right, guys, so here is the factory drain plug. I'm just cleaning it all up and going to install the new ceiling washer. So you could just see here, when it goes on, you can see it almost looks like it's a little bit too big. But if you look carefully, you see that taper towards the bottom? That's where this is concentric, and it sits right in the middle, and it seals just like that. So before we go forward, I just have some mineral spirits and a rag because we're going to clean up the bottom of the oil pan where there was some oil residue but before i do that 
I also like to remove the paint dab that I put last time on here. Just like that. So with a little mineral spirits, you're gonna wipe that off and the pink dab is removed. I have my pink paint marker right here. So we're gonna index it and we're gonna torque this and we're not gonna have any issues. So let's go over to the bottom of the car right now and get that cleaned up. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the drain plug back in and then we're gonna pull the oil drain pan out of the way. We're gonna clean up and then we're gonna mark this bolt to the oil pan to make sure that it doesn't come loose. So you're just gonna snug it tight with your finger and then we're just gonna slide this thing out of there. Okay, so you can see here, they've got some residue all over here. And you got some corrosion because white metals usually corrode. You got some white corrosion on all the aluminum and cast. Okay. And I just used the rag, just a shop towel with some mineral spirits. Mineral spirits are probably one of the greatest things to have in the garage. If you work on cars, it's safe to clean parts and do pretty much anything. I don't like using brake cleaner. I just don't like using anything aerosol that you could inhale and this just seems to work a lot better and I think it's a lot safer. Okay, so let's get the wrench in. We're gonna torque that back up. Okay, so you're just gonna to wanna to snug it up and we're gonna get the paint pen right now. We're gonna pretty much just index here and here just like that. So that's gonna make sure that when I go change the oil the next time, that if this thing moves, that's a problem. That means that it wasn't tight enough or if somebody at the dealership, if they did any warranty work, they tampered with it. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna put the panel back after we clean it out and screw it down, drop the car down the ground. We're gonna fill the crankcase and of course get the factory oil filter out from underneath the airbox assembly. So just shows you the underbelly panel is completely cleaned out. I didn't want to hose it out because like I said, you, then you're going to get wet in the face when you go put the panel back on. So you just want to get all the gravel and anything that's loose out of there and uh, also check for any oil leaks as well. It's always a good indicator for that. So this thing is pretty much ready to go back in the car right now. All right, guys, so we got the underbelly panel all installed. I did all the hardware by hand because I took all the corrosion off with the evaporus and I sprayed some WD-40. Now, when I install underbelly panels, I always do it by hand. I don't use the gun because I don't want to strip out the heads and I don't want to over tighten these where next time you go to service the car, you're never going to be able to get them off or you'll strip it trying to get them off. So FYI, always install them by hand. If you're careful, you can use the gun to remove them like I showed you because a lot of these were snugged up and tight from corrosion. All right, guys, the car is down on the ground. Everything's buttoned up on the bottom. I just want to show you guys a close-up. So this is just a foam yoga block. You could get these locally or you could order these on Amazon. Now, my first video three years ago doing this, I used a piece of wood, but right here we have a safe foam yoga block. So by raising that cavity up, I could easily now get to the 32 millimeter right there to release the factory oil filter. So I'm gonna to try to set the camera up and try to show you guys start to finish how easy this is once you lift up the back of the air box, but make sure the line back there and everything is all disconnected. You don't wanna tug on any of that stuff and cause any issues. So let's just set this up right now and get it done. Pretty much gonna take your 32 millimeter and snake it in there. Okay, so that's pretty much it, you can see it. your wrench to the side now I'm able to unscrew this now by hand I'm just gonna go grab a shop towel there might be a little bit of oil in there but not much so let's get this out now sometimes this filter separates from the housing and like it just did right there and then safely get that out and throw this in a 
Ziploc bag. And if you've got any, yeah, i got a little drip right here. So the filter sometimes will collapse on you when you take it apart. It's not a huge deal. So you can go in there and stick a shock towel and you want to soak up any of that older oil. All right, guys, so we got the oil filter out. Like you saw, it actually collapsed. So I'm just going to prepare the new one by putting some fresh oil on the O-rings. There's O-rings here, here, and here okay so the reason you're gonna to want to do that you want to make sure you bottom out the oil filter because sometimes if you don't and it goes in too dry you could accidentally leave the oil filter loose and you'll have a serious serious leak under pressure while the engine is running and mess all over your driveway so I like to lube it up pretty good just with my finger just like that everything's lubed up now we're gonna get it into the car and this has to be torqued down to 25 newton meters so let's get that installed right now all right so got the new oil filter prepared and like i said having a yoga block in the back just makes this job so much easier so you want to make sure the filter doesn't separate as you screw it in okay we're getting snug so we're going to just go in there and we're going to snug this up and then i'm going to grab the torque wrench All right, got my 3 8 drive torque wrench. You're gonna need an adapter to go from 3 8 down to half inch, just like that. We already set it over on the workbench. Okay, you can hear it click. Okay, so we're torqued to factory spec. We're gonna pull this back, get the yoga block out. We're gonna button this all up, and then we're gonna start filling up the crankcase. Okay, so assembly drops in. Now we're gonna connect that line back there. here it's actually a coolant crossover line okay go over to the other side and get that connected right over here okay we're all clamped in just gonna want to make sure you're all bottomed out now we're gonna put the plenum back in Okay, so we're gonna get the plenum put back in. Start by getting it pushed in in the front into these rubber boots. It snaps right in just like that. And then just double check everything. I wanna make sure these are all the way there. And any grease or whatever, you can, now's the time to just go and wipe it off. Now we're going to start filling up the engine oil crankcase. We're going to start with six quarts of oil. And then after I'm done with all six, I'm going to pull out the dipstick and I'm going to check the level manually before I go any further. So according to what I drained out, I drained out a little bit over seven quarts, probably like 7.2. And that's according to what's in the owner's manual. So, okay, let's pull the dipstick out, kind of see where we are. Thank God this car has an actual real dipstick. So we're just gonna go like that. Now you can see where you want it to be is up to this portion here. If you're all the way down at the bottom, that means you're gonna be low. Okay, so you can see we're 60% right there. You can see that on camera? That's where the current oil level is now. So we're gonna to top it off with one more quart of oil and then we'll check it again. Okay, so we're at the top of the mark. So now we're gonna just remove the funnel, put the cap back on, start it up, go for a drive, and we'll check it again. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys learned some tips and tricks. I highly recommend if you guys own these cars, you're looking to save money, or you just wanna make sure that the car is done the right way, do it yourself. Under 200 bucks, takes you about an hour to do it this way. If you wanna suck it out, it's gonna take you about 20, 30 minutes to do it that way. Also remember the little tip, get the yoga block, make sure you Disconnect the line off the clips in the back of the air, air box plenum and everything back there. Don't break anything. And uh, it's very, very simple to do. All you're going to need is a 32 millimeter for the oil filter, 13 millimeter for the drain plug on the bottom, T30 and a T25 to do all the hardware on the bottom of the car. Make sure you clean it out. Index the plug, torque everything down, clean up, and you're good to go. I didn't get a drop of oil on the floor. 
or in my driveway. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Auto Fanatic channel. Stay tuned for more Alfa Romeo and more automotive content. This is the sixth oil change on the 2018 Giulia Quadrifoglio in the past three years. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one soon.